What's up, everyone? This is Steven, a.k.a. Teros, from Bankroll Builders Fantasy Sports at bankrollbuildersfantasy.com. I'm here to bring you week two of the NFL on Prediction Strike. Now, yesterday I put out a video of our week one recap for the NFL on Prediction Strike. If you haven't had the opportunity to see how we did this past weekend, go to our YouTube channel, have a look at that video, and don't forget to subscribe and like when you do so. That helps us quite a bit. We're going to be transitioning now. Instead of doing the great picks, risky picks, and uh, picks that we are avoiding, we're going to be transitioning now that we have some shares into a buy, sell, and hold for the weekly content videos. That way, you can follow along with us on what we're doing with our investment portfolio so that you can follow along if you choose to do so. Again, these are your decisions. They are for you to make based on information you've gathered, not just from us, but other sources as well. The best way to make good decisions is to have more information. That's why I'm doing this video, is to give you some additional information and an additional perspective on these picks. So, without further ado, we're going to get into this in just a second, but I want to make a quick note that it is Wednesday. Those projections have just come out. They are fairly accurate, but there are opportunities that some players will have a projection that moves on prediction strike before game time on Sunday morning. If that happens and someone turns into no longer being a good buy, in our opinion, or no longer good to be held for that week, we will post that on our Twitter page. Uh, Our Twitter handle is down below in the description. It is at TerrasBBFS. So, if you want to get last-minute notes, if there are any, make sure to follow us on Twitter as well. So... Let's get into the buys, and this week we are buying four players. One of them is quite a bit risky. We will get to him last. But I feel fairly confident in DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift has a projection currently on Wednesday of 17.19 points. That is up from his 16.15 point projection at game time last week. Now, this week he's going against Washington. He just put up 144 yards and two touchdowns, and now he's going against that Washington front line. The thing is, Washington should have a very scary, very difficult front line that should be able to shut down the run. However, Chase Young was not in last week, not expected this week, and Washington has also had two more defensive tackles that have gotten injured this past week, which are likely not going to play this weekend. That means that defensive line is not going to be quite as strong or quite as scary as we would normally expect. I have no problem and no concerns with having DeAndre Swift this weekend. I think that even though his projection's a little higher, it's 17 points, I still think he can do another 20-point fantasy production. He hasn't been purchased a whole lot this past weekend so we can get in as one of the early people on DeAndre Swift and then see how long we can hold him after that. Next we're going to be taking Curtis Samuel. He is 11.13 points this weekend and he's going to be playing Detroit. He's on the other side of that ball. I think this game has the opportunity to have a couple of players that are going to do really well as far as fantasy production is concerned. Curtis Samuel, I'm primarily doing it because of how many targets he got, just how he looked on the field, his cuts, his production, his, frankly, the confidence that the team had in him. I mean, you had Terry McLaurin on the field, but Curtis Samuel ended up being the almost hyper-targeted player on the field. Antonio Gibson had eight targets. I believe Curtis Samuel had 10 targets. And then Terry McLaurin was actually not that many targets, to be quite honest, which means teams are honing in on shutting down Terry McLaurin, which is going to open up Curtis Samuel. And he looks like he did more like 2020 rather than 2021. So I've gone ahead and I've purchased a little bit of Curtis Samuel just to get in. Hopefully he produces a 20 point game. 
Uh, if he does that, then we're looking at a 23% gain, and I will be ecstatic with something like that. Next, we're going to go with Joshua Palmer of the Los Angeles Chargers. He is currently projected 10.9 points. Uh, I've been in a couple of Discord groups. Uh, other people are fairly high on him as well, provided that projection doesn't change too much between now and Sunday morning. I don't think it will, um, but we are talking about a player that was already projected to be the solid number three wide receiver on the team before the season began. And then Keenan Allen, superstar wide receiver, got injured early this past week, and Joshua Palmer saw quite a few targets. Now, the ball was spread around quite a bit, but if they're planning for Joshua Palmer to be on the field 50, 60, 70 snaps this game, possibly more because they're playing the Kansas City Chiefs. It's probably going to be a shootout type of game. I'm not too confident in Kansas City's ability to shut down the Chargers, but Kansas City also is a strong team themselves. I think they can put up another big game this weekend just like they did against the Bills. Sorry, not against the Bills, um, but they did have a strong game this past weekend. Uh, Kansas City could go out there and turn this into a shootout, which means a lot more passing opportunities for the wide receivers like Joshua Palmer, who's stepping into a bigger role. This is also the opportunity for Joshua Palmer, the young player, to come in and show, hey, if you give me that consistent starting role, I will produce for you. So there's something on the line for him. I think he's going to want to produce really well this weekend. So we've grabbed some of Joshua Palmer. And then a little bit more of a risky option, I have gone and picked up some Kyle Phillips. Now, Kyle Phillips was heavily targeted. I believe he had nine targets this past weekend on the Tennessee Titans. He seemed like their premier, primary wide receiver that they were going to use as much as they could, get the ball into his hands as often as they could. The reason why this is a little risky, it's a six-point projection, which is exactly what we want. We want a projection above five points, but we want it as close to that as possible. The reason being, if you put up a 15-point game, an 18-point game, we're talking 40-50% gain on a single game. That's gold for us. We want those sorts of things. So, the reason it's risky, they're playing the Buffalo Bills this week. If the Bills put too much pressure on Ryan Tannehill, which is a possibility, then he's going to have trouble getting rid of the ball. He's going to have to get rid of that ball really, really quickly. That could mean that Kyle Phillips doesn't have a great game. So this is one that, just so that you know, a risky option that we're taking a chance on. If you want to join in with us on that, absolutely. Go ahead. We welcome that. If you choose not to pick up Kyle Phillips, we completely understand it's your money, your hard-earned money that you've worked for. And if you don't want to put it at risk like that, I totally understand. Just letting you know where we're looking at for this week coming up. Now, if Kyle Phillips' projection goes up into the 8-point, 9-point range, I'll probably just go ahead and eat the transaction fees and get rid of him again and just hold that money off for the week. But for now, I've picked up Kyle Phillips already because I want to get in early. Now, moving on to the Holtz. These are players that we've already purchased and that we're planning on holding on to for this week and possibly a couple additional weeks. First up is going to be Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts had a great game. He was projected 22 points this past weekend. He beat that projection. His projection this week is down very, very slightly. It's 21.74. But he's going against the Minnesota, um, the Minneapolis, Minnesota Vikings. Um, it could be a good game for him. It could be a challenging game for him. We just don't know much about that defense just yet. Uh, I think it's going to take a couple games before we really realize how the Vikings defense is going to fare this week. Um, they weren't terrible last year. They weren't superstars last year. Uh, they went against the Green Bay Packers, so it's a 
difficult situation to figure out how the Packers should do this year. Hall of Fame quarterback, but young rookie wide receivers. They didn't have their star wide receiver or the projected wide receiver that's going to be a star. So kind of difficult to tell how that Vikings defense is going to do. But we know how Jalen Hurts is going to do. Jalen Hurts did fantastic, and he hyper-targeted A.J. Brown, which showed up in a big way, didn't have any problem with the transition from the Tennessee Titans over to the Philadelphia Eagles. So, And that can sometimes happen. A player comes from another team. They have to get readjusted to the scheme. They don't usually do well their first season, but their second season, they've got more of a handle and they do a better job. But A.J. Brown, absolutely no problem there. Devonta Smith, not used very much at all. Uh, but even with that, I mean, if, that just means Devonta Smith has an opportunity to get used more, and he is a playmaker. So there's an opportunity that Hurts beats this projection as well, could score 24, 25, 26 points this week. So we're going to hold on to him and see what happens. And if the worst happens, he has a terrible game, then we'll probably sell off after that. Now, Antonio Gibson... 16.15 points. That means his projection is up three points from last week. Again, he was one of our first players that we mentioned last week for the week one picks. I mentioned then that he's capable of 20 point games. He did it quite a few times last season. And sure enough, he did. He was a big game, big gain. Uh, this week, he's playing Detroit as well, so we've got Curtis Samuel and we've got Antonio Gibson against this Detroit defense. It should be an interesting game. 16.15-point uh, projection. That could change. It could go up, could go down. I'd be surprised if it went up, uh, to be quite honest. Uh, already going up three points, my my looks at last year and how much a player changed from week to week, three points was about the max. So I don't really see it going much higher. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that Gibson's going to have another 20-point game. That's just me personally, but I think that that's what we're looking at for Antonio Gibson. So we're holding on him. Lastly, Michael Pittman. Currently projected for 16.62 points, according to Prediction Strike, which is one point higher than he had last week. He did beat that. He had a good game. And I think that, really, I'm going to hold Pittman for a while. Now, why is Pittman a hold instead of a buy? Why did we transition from, buy, from picks to doing buy-sell-hold? Well, I had a discussion a little while ago with... a um, expert from another organization that does prediction strike as well uh, kind of a discord community and just talking about it a little bit he made an interesting point i see his point i disagree in some ways but i can understand the sentiment on it so michael pittman has had a lot of people purchase him over the off season he's what we call a pump he's a guy that he probably had, I want to say his gain over the offseason was 50%, and that's because so many people purchased him before the season began. Okay, 16.62 projection, that's a pretty high projection. You know, he is playing Jacksonville, and then he's got Kansas City, Tennessee, Denver, Jacksonville a second time, Tennessee a second time, and then Washington. Not very difficult. His next... Most difficult game, I think, is going to be Week 9 against the New England Patriots. So, for me, that makes him a great hold. I mean, if he has one bad game in the middle of that, okay, he's probably going to make that back on the other games. If not, have very small losses, if any. The point that was made to me was that since so many people purchased Michael Pittman, if he has a terrible game, let's say he goes out there gets three points. I don't think that's going to happen, uh, which is part of the reason why I argued against that idea. But just to make sure you've got all the information and all the different viewpoints. If he goes out there, gets a three-point game, 
he has a large loss on the week. Probably a max 25% loss. And then all of the other people who purchased him decide to start selling. He could drop another 20% on top of that. Which means that if you purchased him right now, there's a risk there that if he has a bad game right away, you could be looking at significant losses on whatever you invested in him. If you've already purchased him and you were there for the whole rise during the off season, right now you're sitting on cloud nine. You've got a 50 to 60% gain over the past couple of months. And if he has one bad game, okay, you just don't sell him during that time. Same thing I do on the stock market. If we're going into a recession, if we're seeing that a stock is going straight down, solid teams or solid uh, solid management teams, you can kind of understand and know that, okay, they're going to get back to where they were. You don't have to worry so much. No one's going to think that Amazon is going to drop 10% in one day and that they're never going to get it back. Not unless something major happens. And I mean like another player Netflix comes in and destroys Blockbuster kind of situation happens, which doesn't seem to be the case. So translating that to the NFL, Michael Pittman is kind of that guy for me. I think that throughout the remainder of the be- the first half of this season, he's going to continue to do well. Now, I'll probably sell him week seven, week eight when he's near that peak. I want to take my gains and move on to somebody else but I think that he's going to do well so as a hold I have full confidence in him and I've got him in my portfolio and you'll know when I decide to sell him which brings me into our sells for the week so over the off season I had purchased Sky Moore DJ Moore and then right before the games last weekend I picked up Mike Davis all of them are sold. I've gotten rid of all of them. Sky Moore, unfortunately, not many targets at all. He got one catch during the game. It wasn't a huge kind of situation. It wasn't a big, you know, planned play for him to get the ball. It was more that Patrick Mahomes scrambled. He happened to be the open guy. Mahomes threw the ball to him. That was it. So Sky Moore is not looking like the player that's going to consistently get good gains for us. So I've sold him. DJ Moore, his projections are a little bit high, and he didn't seem to be the superstar on the team. Actually, the player who looked the most impressive on that team was actually Robbie Anderson, who had a lot of juice. I mean, the dude was quick. He caught the ball in risky situations, and... As long as Baker Mayfield was able to get him while he was open, which was pretty often, uh, he looked like a really good player, really good option on that team. Now, I'm not too confident in Carolina for this week, which is why I don't have Robbie Anderson sitting on my buy list. But DJ Moore, I, I just couldn't hold him any longer. I'd purchased him, gotten a little bit of a gain from him, ended up selling him, uh, this week. Mike Davis, kind of obvious reasons there. Purchased him right before the games this past weekend. Thought he was going to be the number two running back on that team that was moving up into the starting role because of Dobbins being out. I've heard of people, analysts on NFL website and NFL network say they thought he was going to be the number two. I heard from people in different DFS communities. I heard from people in different fantasy football league groups, all thought that Mike Davis was going to be the guy that moved into that role. He wasn't. It was Kenyon Drake and Kenyon Drake wasn't even that good. Both players actually lost on that projection that they had. Kenyon Drake went under his and Mike Davis went under his. So Mike Davis, sorry, you're gone. I had to sell him uh, because I wanted to make room as well for the players that were on our buy list. So make sure to comment below anyone that you think is a risk on here, anyone you think was left off this list that should have been on the buy or should have been on the hold list. 
If you think I was crazy for selling DJ Moore, make those comments down below. I am happy to interact with all of you. Again, go to our Twitter page, follow us, make sure that you don't miss the news on Sunday morning. Remember to subscribe and to turn on that notification bell on YouTube. As for me, that's it for this week. I will see you soon and see you after this weekend's game. Good luck and let's build that bankroll.